they needed somebody to call the cows in, and they got me because I had a loud voice. So I always not, I've not ever been too shy, maybe a little bit, but to when I was younger, but not, not real shy. And uh, I think of Elizabeth when she comes up here to sing and how shy she is, but when she gets up there to sing, you can't tell she's shy because mm -hmm. she lets it out and, uh, and sings so pretty. And there's some people that just, you know, they can't uh, say the things that they're feeling inside. And uh, I know that. And that's what this song is about. That one day, we're going to get carried away and we're going to let the glory grow.
Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of the serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for ensamples, and they are written for our admonition Amen. upon whom the ends of the world are come. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed, lest he fall. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in word of prayer. Amen. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Father, for the opportunity to stand here today, Lord. We pray, Father, that the words that I speak, Lord, will not be my word, but your word, Lord, that you would talk to all of our hearts, Lord, to draw us closer to you, Father, that we might learn your word, Lord, apply it to our hearts and lives and use it for the furtherance of your kingdom, that your name would be lifted up and that you would receive the glory and the honor. Thanks, Father, for loving us and for giving us your, your precious word, Father, that will endure forever, Lord. We pray, Father, that you'd help us boldly declare your word to a lost and dying world that someone might come, up, come to know you for it's forever too late. Thanks, Father, for a church, Lord, that we can come to, Lord, to stand on your word, Father, that will take your word, Lord, and preach it and not back down and compromise on it, but, Lord, will use it for your furtherance of your kingdom. We thank you, Father, for our pastor, Lord, and for your blessed Holy Spirit that leads him and gives him the messages to draw us closer to you, Father, that we might uh, be an example unto others, Lord, that they might come to know you for forever too late. Bless the ministry of this church that would be a light set on a hill as you commanded us to do, Lord, to go into all the world and to preach the gospel, Lord, that some may come to know you for forever too late. We pray, Father, that everything said and done here tonight, lift up your name and bring you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, thanks for reading Amen. our examples and for our learning. And it says that they all, in verse 4 it says, in verse 3 it says, in verse 2 it says, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that was that rock was Christ. Amen. Every one of them was part of that church. That people that God had called out. God chose the people every time. God chose the people to go out and to, to forth to, for His kingdom that people may come into His kingdom. Amen. I want you to look in, in Matthew, and we may or may not come back there. Matthew chapter 16, very familiar verses over here. <coughs> In Matthew chapter 16, in verses 18 uh, to 25. In Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 to 25. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Jesus Christ being that rock that they all drink of. Amen. In verse 19, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And God has given all power and authority to His church Amen. to go forth and to do His will until He comes back. That's right. And when He told His church, when He descended up into the, into the, into the heaven, He said He will be back. Yes. That He will receive us again unto Himself one of these days. Amen. But we're to go and to do the ministry that Christ started here in himself in the beginning when he died for his people. He says in verse 20, Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. And the prophets prophesied of Jesus coming to die. And Peter over here, he didn't want Jesus to die, but here's what, uh, but Jesus, but he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me. For thou savest not the things that be of God, but those things that be of men. Because Peter didn't want to see Jesus die, but he was prophesied that he would die for the sins of the whole world. Yes. And, and Jesus told him, get thee behind me, Satan. Satan can, can use any one of us to distort what God has got planned. That's right. Uh, any one of us that are not, uh, 
are not studying His Word to show ourselves approved unto God, a worker that needeth not be ashamed, rather dividing the Word of truth, Satan can easily set in and get us to think that things are right when they're not. That's right. They're completely contrary to the Word of God. And Satan used Peter here to try to save Jesus from going to the cross, which if Paul said that Christ had not risen, our faith would be in vain, and we would still be dead in our sin. That's right. And then he says here, then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. If your life is not going good, give it to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because he can make your life Amen. what it never was before. That's right. That person that I used to be before I come to know Christ, I would not want to be that same guy today. Mm -hmm. Even though I still carry around the flesh that came with it, I'm a new creature created in Christ Jesus. Amen. As Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ liveth in me in the life that I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Thank God for my blessed Redeemer who gave me a life that is worth living. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Look in Ephesians chapter 6. In Ephesians chapter 6, in verses 10 to, 10 to 20, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the, might, the power of His mind. What is the power of His mind? The Word of God. Amen. Amen. That is our power that we have. We can do all things through Christ that strengthens us Amen. because of His Word. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Let me tell you something. Satan knows who's living God's Word. Mm -hmm. He knows the church of God that standeth on God's Word. He knows each and every one of them. And He's trying to destroy each and every one of them. And if, as we'll read here in a little, in a little while, well, we'll go on. It says for in verse 13, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Verse 14, Stand there for having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. That's first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the truth, you don't have nothing. That's right. If you don't have the Word of God, you can throw everything else out of the way because that is what's going to keep you going. Yeah. I wanted to, to look, and before we go any further there, in verse 14, it says, Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and that... And that, uh, that word loins there in the Vines Expository Dictionary, it says bracing up oneself so as to maintain perfect sincerity and reality as the counter-reactive in Christian character against hypo hypocrisy and falsehood. Mm -hmm. You know what that is? So that we might be able to try the spirits of God whether they are from God or not. Yes. To try the spirits whether they are from God. How are you going to try them? You're going to try them by the Word of God. Amen. If someone comes and tells you that something's so, if it don't line up with the Word of God, it is not so. That's right. That's right. And it's going to have a whole bunch of truth mixed in with it, but there's just going to be that little lie. And because you are, you have your loins girded about with that truth, it's going to reveal that darkness that is in that, that thing that they tell you. Amen. Mm -hmm. That truth will reveal what is wrong with that. That's right. That Spirit of God who's living in you will show you that because God broke His Word in your heart and That's in right. your mind. Amen. But it's up to you to keep that Word of, word of God out to, to, so you will know that falsehood and that hypocrisy. To know that things are not all that they seem that they are. Mm -hmm. In verse 15 it says, "...and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace." 
Above all, take in the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And they're coming. They're coming. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you what, if you're going to stand for God in this world, then you're not going to have very many friends. Mm -mm. That's true. You're not going to have. It's, and I guarantee you, if you're going to stand up on, on the Word of God, I guarantee you when I work for people and they tell me all the they'll, they'll say, say different things, and I guarantee you it puts a mark right between us. Because I tell them, well, I because they know I don't want to listen to the rock and roll music, so they'll play contemporary music. And you know what? That drives me crazy as anything else. And I tell them, you know, I don't listen to that. I listen to spiritual songs and the songs of the Lord that, that uplift Jesus, not me. Because the flesh wants to be uplifted. And they just get on my nerves and then just draws a blank right between us. This Pentecostal, when my foot got hurt, he said, me and my, he said, me and my wife, we can pray over you. And I said, no, I believe in praying over people, laying on the hands works, but I believe it's through the church. Amen. Not through individuals. You know what? He draws a mark between us. You know why? Because I'm crazy. I'm trying to live too close to the line to God's Word. And you know what? I don't care if the whole world forsakes me. I'm going to want to do what God wants me to do. Amen. Amen. I don't have to study to show myself approved unto man. I have to stu study to show myself approved unto God. And He's Amen. all that matters. Right. Nothing else matters but what God's Word says. Amen. And it's up to us to, to bring it out there and to use it for whose glory? Not mine. Because if I was out for my glory, I would compromise. But I'm not out for my glory. I want God to be glorified because His Word said it. He don't change. He's still the same. We don't have a new faith. We have the old faith. Mm -hmm. We don't need a new Word. We got the old path. Mm -hmm. They still work today as well as they did back then. Yes. The only thing is, is we got more things to that sin is prevalent in the world, then we can just go outside our door and get it. Sometimes we don't even have to leave our house. It's there. Mm -hmm. Satan's trying to get do everything he can to just have one member of the church fall. That's right. A little leaven leavened the whole up. Mm -hmm. And you can tell sometimes about how the Spirit works in this, and it's been really good. The pastor has been preaching especially good. Man. And y'all know that he has. Yeah. I mean exceptionally well. And I guarantee you because that spirit is so strong, Satan's going to be around to get any one of us to fall. Yeah. Right. And it's not going to be just by a blatant lie because you know what? He knows we're too smart for that. Because this church has preached the Word of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. And because this church has preached the Word of God, we know the Word of God whether we study it or not because we've heard it enough. But Satan's going to be getting in here to try to take away that because he knows who's living for God and who ain't. Mm -hmm. He knows who's already compromised the Word of God and who ain't. I don't want to compromise God's Word. Amen. Amen. In verse 17 it says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, Amen. praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching there unto with all perseverance and Supplication for all saints. And you know what? Each one of us, we can learn from each other. Because sometimes we don't always do what we ought to do when we think it's okay. Yes, we do. Because Satan is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. We'll look at that here in a little while. But you know what? He just wants this to creep in just a little bit. Just a little bit. I remember TJ used to always say, and Lisa used to always bring it to our attention when y'all left. Y'all let a little stuff in here that... Remember what TJ said, you let a little stuff in here and then before you know it, you done went off the deep end. Because Satan's going to start real little. You know why? Because we have the truth of mm -hmm. God. Yeah. And people are always saying, well, I've been praying about it. Well, that's okay to pray about it. We ought to pray about all things. But you know what? When we're praying about it, we ought to see what God's Word says about it. Right. Amen. Because you can pray about it all you want, but if God's Word does not back up that prayer, it is no good. That's right. It don't mean a thing. Mm -hmm. It don't even go up to God. Because it's going to have to be praying in God's will. That's right. Amen. In favor of God's Word. In verse 19, And for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. And every one of us ought to have that prayer. Amen. That we can open our mouth boldly 
and tell people about Jesus. No matter who it's going to offend, because it's going to offend people anyway. Because you know what? To come to know Jesus as our Savior, then we're going to have to know that we're sinners. And I've heard people preachers say all the time, you know what? You've got to get them lost before you can get them saved. And if you go tell them that they're sinners, they're not going to get saved because they're going to be offended. Well, then they weren't going to get saved anyway. Because a man's got to know that he's a sinner before he can come to know Christ and save him. In verse 20, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, my hands are tied. I can do nothing but tell people about Jesus. I don't want to talk about nothing. You know why? Because I'm his prisoner. Them who he foreknew, them he also did predestinate to be what? Conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came in here to this world to save sinners. So what are we here in this world for? To save sinners. Right. To tell people about Jesus. Our hands are tied because He tied them. Mm -hmm. right. For which I am an ambassador in bonds, and every one of us is that ambassador of this church. Amen. When we go outside these walls, people look at us as what this church is all about. Mm -hmm. Of whether we're living for Jesus or not. Well, I don't want to go down to that church. There's a bunch of hypocrites down there. Like the pastor says, pray God, I'm one of them. I need, I need a church where I can come get help. Mm -hmm. But you know what? We ought to look like Christ when we're out there. Mm -hmm. Always be ready to give an answer of the hope that is within you when asked. And why does Paul say that? Because people don't want what you don't have for them. They want the hope that is in you. Amen. And what is that hope? That hope of glory, which is Jesus Christ. And, they, and Paul says, always be ready to give an answer when asked. You know why? Because people are going to ask, what is the hope that is within you? You know why? Because you've got something they don't have. That's right. you got hope. They say, yeah. what is your hope? My hope is in Jesus. You don't have to go tell everybody that you're Christian. All you do is you like to show them to who you are Amen. and show where you belong. And people want to know what you've got because they have never seen it before. They have no hope. Look in a... First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1. I'm getting used to using these different Bibles to study and all that other stuff. <laughs> It'd be so much easier with one because it's not on the right side of the page, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> In 1 Peter chapter 1, and we'll go ahead and read, well, we'll read verses 13 to first. Wherefore, Gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what I'm waiting for. Amen. I'm waiting on Jesus Christ to be to be revealed from heaven. Amen. That's what I'm living my life for. Me and Sean talked about that earlier. I would love to go right now. Because we're going to have to go anyway. And we might as well go ahead right now. But we don't have to work no more. We don't have to do the things that are sorrowful in this flesh. We don't have to see loved ones pass away no more. Hmm. We can just go be with Jesus right now. Paul says he was in a betwixt to desire to part to be with the Lord. What, what do you want? Do you don't want the Lord to come back now because you still got things to do in your life? Mm -hmm. We ought to have that hope of looking for the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Right now. But in verse 13, he says, Gird up the loins of your mind. And I looked up that word, loins, in the mind's dictionary again, and it says, Girding, suggestive of the alertness necessary for sobriety and for setting one's hope perfectly on the grace to be brought by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because we ought to be alert. You know why? 
Because our adversary is looking to see when he might divide. Amen. We're looking at look verse th uh, 14. Verse 13, it says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fastening yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father who without respect to persons judges according to every man's word, pass the time of your soldier and hear in fear. Fear of what? In fear of those dying and going to hell. Mm -hmm. That people are leaving this world and going to hell and we're not going to stand in the gap to tell them about Jesus. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things of silver and of gold from your vain conversation received by the tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was the four, was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, right. who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Amen. Amen. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Amen. Being born again not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the Word of God which Amen. liveth and abideth forever. That's right. That's what I want to make the theme of my whole life. The yeah. Word of God is all that matters. Man. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower thereof falleth away. Mm -hmm. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Amen. Now I want to go back and look at a few uh, verses here in, in, in the, this letter, First Peter here. We'll start at verse 7. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. You know why? Because the trial of our faith is going to be tried. Yeah. The trial of our faith is going to, if you're going to live for God and you're going to stand on God's word, I guarantee you, you're going to have trials. You're going to have bad things said about you and know how you have arrived and all this other stuff because you stand on God's Word. Amen. Oh, God don't want you to be that perfect. Yes, He does. He wants you to take His Word and bind them on your heart Amen. and keep them and go out there and tell them just as David's been talking about in Sunday school and the prophets, that God told the prophets, go and tell them. And you know what? It's not easy to go and tell them. It's not easy to go and tell them because you know why? Because it's going to hurt. Paul says, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm joying with you, but I'm sad behind you at the same time. Why? Because he don't want to tell them either. Why? The flesh don't want to tell them either. But it's the truth, and we need to hear Amen. the truth. Amen. But the trial of our faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found under praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom have not seen you love, and whom though now you see him not, yet believe and you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of yes. glory. Amen. Amen. Let the glory grow as TJ saying. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. Amen. My Redeemer died for me. I didn't deserve it, but he did it anyway. That's right. In verse 9, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. You mean the Spirit of Christ was in them? Yes, it was. Yes. Because they all of the spiritual rock which was Christ. Amen. That spirit was in them and they prophesied to, to, the, to what was going to happen to Christ, the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should be revealed. In verse 12, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves 
but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven Amen. with things the angels desire to look into. Right. Mm -hmm. Woo! The gospel is preached out through you unto those that believe by the Holy Ghost that is sent down from heaven. Amen. And pleases God with the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Yes. Amen. Amen. Look at 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5.